My guest today is Dave Herster. Dave, how you doing? I'm doing well, David. How are you? I'm doing really well. It's been a long time since I've seen you. And, it has. Uh, even longer since you've been on my show. I just looked. <laughs> and it was April of 2010, almost 11 years ago. Crazy, and I, right? And we both look even younger um, now. No, it's, it's funny how we get better looking as time it's like, goes on. We're like the curious like, case of Benjamin Button twice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what do you do? What are you doing these days? You're, I know you started working for Microsoft since uh, since 2010. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I joined Microsoft in uh, I think May of 2016, something like that. So almost five years for me. And um, I originally joined as a, a technology strategist, uh, which was a little bit of a different spin for me since I came from an app dev background. Um, but I've been in a cloud solutions architect role um, here at Microsoft for I think like two and a half years. Or something like that. So I'm still based out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I support the Midwest Great region. city. Yep. And um, yeah, it's it's been a really interesting ride um, here with Microsoft. So it's been a lot of fun. And um, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't trade for anything. And uh, yeah, I mean these days, you know, I'm an app dev CSA. I, I focus in on uh, you know I work a lot with open source, cloud native type of um, projects. So a lot of Kubernetes work. And uh, surprisingly, I also do a lot of work with Azure AD B2C and helping our customers um, implement and design um, identity solutions for their customer-facing solutions or their apps. Let's talk about that. Uh, yeah. B2C stands for what? Uh, business to consumer. Uh, so, and, uh, as opposed to business to business, B2B. Right. Uh, what, what particular problems do uh, business to consumer uh, applications have that, that other applications do not yeah i mean so if we go all the way back let's let's think back in uh 2010 if you're building a web application right um you're probably you're probably a lot of the web apps that were being built deployed those days were probably managing their own credential store you know probably a lot of people were storing credentials in a database or, or whatever that might be um and so as web applications have evolved over time become much more of a modern type of platform um, the needs for uh, managing credentials have become more and more complex. And so um, customers really need to, or, or uh, businesses, or Microsoft customers, need to engage with their customers um, sort of in a, um, say, a, a what's called like modern auth. So being able to um, embrace um, uh, you know, protocols like OpenID and SAML and things like that. So a standardized way of authenticating users. And so... What B2C really is all about is allowing um, our customers to plug in sort of industry standard protocols into their front-facing web applications and allow their customers to come in to their front-facing web apps and perhaps sign up for an account um, on those web applications. So if you go to a retailer, you know, you may want to sign up for an account at, at um, you know, Acme Sporting Goods. Um, but then you also may not want to create your own account there. Maybe you want to bring um, a social identity um, there because I'm always on Facebook or I'm always on GitHub or whatever it might be. And I want to just use that identity to identify, identify myself um, inside of that application. And so um, a B2C solution allows um, businesses to uh, let their customers essentially bring in and manage their own identities. And then the customers just rely on those external identity providers to um, manage passwords and, and all that type of uh, all that type of fun stuff. I see. So it's really it's really evolved over the, the last 10 years or so. Um, I do remember that I used to I wrote uh, in early versions of Commerce Server. I wrote oh. a couple of applications and we had to roll our own credentials and have a table yep. of users and uh, password encrypted passwords and things like that. And so oh, we yeah. forgot their passwords. That, that was our job to change it. Um, Oh yeah, lots of fun. I those were days I I don't uh, I don't miss. <laughs> yeah. What kind of tooling do you use to handle these uh, the identities and interacting with the uh, open standards and so on? Sure. Well, so um, so Microsoft's service for this is called Azure AD B 2 C or Azure Active Directory B 2 C, um, and so really that's that's a service that we provide. It's hosted in Azure. It's really 
um, a uh, an Azure AD tenant really set up for um, B2C use cases. So really, it's just a service that your your web application can plug into. Um, and so it doesn't really matter what your what your web application is built in. It could be .NET, it could be Node, it could be whatever. Um, and really, all you need to be able to do is to um, use an authentication library to um, allow your users to authenticate in um, and be able to handle the tokens that are being returned back. So um, usually, if you're building a .NET Core application, you use something like MSOL um, or, or like Microsoft Identity Web. Um, NuGet packages to to build that out, but there's a number of other um, tools and frameworks out there, um, really libraries that you can just plug into your app to connect your web application to B2C. How does the Azure AD B2C differ from just Azure AD? So if you um, so Azure AD, you know most companies probably have Azure AD um, as their corporate credential. Um, store. So whether you know users, computers, all that kind of stuff, um, they're probably using Azure AD for for something if if they're in the cloud. Um, but the uh, the the thing is is that if you're also building customer facing applications and you want to manage those identities, you probably don't want those customer identities in with your corporate um, identities. <laughs> so you want to well, kind of keep true, it nice. But you could you could just have a separate. Uh... Uh, organization Azure within AD, uh, yeah, and handle th that problem. You you could, um, but I probably not recommended because with Azure AD just by itself, um, you get a lot, right? There's there's a lot of services, there's a lot of features that um, Azure AD just by itself provides. Um, but still, if you're going to um, allow users to come into your site and sign up and sign in and maybe do some profile editing and things like that, there's a lot of things that you have to write um, in order to enable that. So mm -hmm. what Azure AD B2C does is it essentially says, all right, we're going to take an Azure AD tenant um, and maybe some of the more corporate-y, enterprise-y features are not really uh, available. Um, like like finding a printer, for example. Yeah, things like that, or maybe uh, designing like, uh, like enterprise application type of stuff, right? you're probably not going to be needing that for um, a customer facing solution. So they'll, they'll take, you know, you, you'll take uh, an Azure AD tenant when you provision B2C. And then really on top of that, you're going to also provision a policy engine. Now, now from your perspective, you don't see any of that. That's what's happening behind the scenes under the hood. You just see a B2C service that, that gets provisioned. Um, but really the combination of that Azure AD tenant and the policy engine on top of it really is kind of the secret sauce for B2C. So when I uh, plug B2C into my front-facing web app, a customer is going to come in and say, hey, I want to sign up for Acme Sporting Goods. And so what happens is, is that you'll invoke a policy against Azure AD B2C. And that's really going to then go to that policy engine where you, you have already defined kind of like a workflow or sort of um, kind of configuration around how you want to handle sign up. Uh, what attributes do you want to collect from that user? What type of attributes do you want to return back as claims when that user actually creates their account and signs in? Um, do you want to enable things like conditional access? Uh, maybe you want to, uh, if they're coming in from certain locations that you're not fond of, or maybe they're coming in on a Tor browser, um, things like that. Maybe you want to force them to uh, multi-factor, make sure they really are who they say they are. Um, all those different ways that you can figure those different experiences for signing up, signing in, editing profiles and things like that are kind of defined as configuration within that policy engine. So the user comes in, logs in, um, you know, gets their credentials uh, via everything that's stored in the Azure AD tenant underneath the hood. So long-winded answer to a really short question, but you can think of Azure AD and B2C as really two separate tenants. Um, they both perform the basic functionality under the hood, B2C just gives you some policy configuration on top of that. Yeah, quite a bit, it sounds like. Yeah. Uh, what are claims? Oh, uh, so claims are really uh, uh, bits of information that your uh, user journey um, collects about you, right? So if I want to sign up uh, for Acme Sporting Goods, one of the um, questions it might ask me when I sign up, in addition to like what your name is and what your email address is, is maybe uh, what's your favorite sport? Right, I don't know. 
Um, but maybe that helps drive other decisions about your identity later on when you start to interact with Acme Sporting Goods. And so that might be a, uh, a bit of information, an attribute that Acme Sporting Goods collects about you when you sign up for an account. And then that's probably going to be persisted as part of your identity in the underlying uh, B2C tenant. And so when I go to log in um, later on to Acme Sporting Goods, and I sign in as David Herster um, on the Acme Sporting Goods uh, website, what is returned back to me is probably an identity token or an access token. And some of that information that's contained um, in that token is going to be information about me, my first name, my last name, my, my display name, and then also my favorite sport. Um, and that might be part of my identity and part of my identity token as I go to different parts of the Acme Sporting Goods website. And they'll use that bit of, you know, it's a little attribute um, on, my, on my token. And different parts of the application might take that out and use it to display specials or coupon codes that maybe only people who really like baseball are eligible for. Right. I don't know. Um, but, but yeah, that's essentially what claims are. They're just like little, little attributes about you um, that you want to associate with your identity tokens later on down the road. Got it. Yep. Um, I remember when I started, I mentioned I did some, uh, some commerce server work back in the day and we rolled our own, uh, uh, authentic or yeah, authentication mechanism by our own <clears> table. <throat> and when when Active Directory was first ported to Azure, uh, it was great, but it wasn't ideal for B two C. And the reason at that time was that it didn't scale. It was it was great for companies, even very large companies. But if I had mm -hmm. a global business that was selling to millions of different users, some of whom would only come back one time, yeah, uh, it didn't. Uh, scalability was a big issue. Has that been addressed? Yeah. So I mean. Uh, in addition to Azure AD, you know, BC really is the same, you know, type of tenant underneath the hood. Um, so scalability, the global scale of of Azure, um, has really matured over the last years, right? You know, with the last ten years, um, and so uh, yeah, being able to handle more than ten years ago, I think. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so being able to handle, you know, millions of, uh, you know, user accounts and things like that is really no problem for for Azure AD or B two C. Um, it, no problem at all. So, I mean, the number of authentications that Microsoft handles, my, I should say Azure AD handles um, per year, I mean, it's what in the, the, I have no idea, billions and billions, I, I guess. Uh, I forget what the stat is, um, but it's a lot. <laughs> it's a really big number. And um, yeah, there's there's really no issue from a scalability perspective with, with B2C when you're talking like, you know, million, you know, 5 million users or something like that. Yeah, uh, yeah, billions, it sounds like, uh, and. A uh, goal that's uh, not achievable for if I start my own business, but really, if a company takes off, not only do you have every user, but they may may log in multiple times. They may forget their account, log in again that's six right. months later with a new account. Uh, and there's a lot of dead accounts out there. Somebody just yep. logged in one time just to check the price of something, and then decided to go somewhere else to buy it. I mean, there's oh yeah, just in terms of the number of accounts is enormous. Yep. Um, yeah, so it could definitely yeah it definitely will grow over time and. Yeah, you know, there's there's ways you can kind of go through and kind of check, you know, last login times and, and things like that and collect information about your users as they're logging into your website. And you could say, you know, after maybe two years of inactivity, I'm going to go through and maybe disable a bunch of accounts. And then, you know, after another year, nobody complains about their account being disabled. Maybe you you delete it at some point or or whatever. Um, but, you know, if you, um, you know, probably just some some good housekeeping, you know, over over time just to. You know, disable the things that really don't need to be enabled. Are tools like that have built into uh, Azure AD B to C? Or are those things that uh, you have to write yourself? So those are things that you can um, build using um, like the Microsoft Graph API to um, you know just just write a simple job, go out, kind of scan your user account base, and uh, you know grab the you know maybe have an attribute or something in there like last login time that you can query off of and. Essentially, at that point, just kind of get the, the all those accounts that haven't been logged in for a couple of years or whatever, and mm -hmm. set a flag and disable it. Are there any um, examples that you can share with us of uh, companies you've worked with that have implemented B2C? Um, well, I don't know if I can talk about company names specifically, um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's a number of them that I've, I've worked with over over the years to implement um, a number of different B2C solutions. So. Um, the, you know, the funny thing is it, they kind of all sort of fall into a, a very similar type of pattern um, where there's really kind of maybe like one or two 
patterns I, I typically see, at least at least from my experience. Um, you know, other other CSAs and other folks might have much different experiences in terms of the customers they work with. But you know, usually you get the situation where you have um, a company that uh, you might have a legacy um, uh, authentication system or potent, potentially several legacy authentication. Um, systems laying around, and uh, usually some of the work that we do is is going around or, or going about kind of building this migration into B 2 C, right? Mm-hmm. So taking uh, the old uh, legacy um, authentication systems, migrating those accounts into B 2 C, and then allowing users to um, at, you know next time they come into Acme Sporting Goods, they're not going mm-hmm. against the old identity um, application or authentication server. They're going to actually um, go against B 2 C. There's a couple different approaches that you can take with that, and actually, there's there's a couple of examples um, in the uh, in the B2C docs um, on the MSDN docs page uh, about um, it's called like a seamless integration or seamless migration. Mm-hmm. So essentially, um, instead of having the user recreate an account or even reset their password inside of B2C, um, you can actually like, seamlessly have that user um, when they come in. You can uh, design things that are called custom policies. That will go against the old system first to authenticate them, and then if that uh, authentication works, you can actually then um, migrate that user's account up into B2C without the user really even knowing, um, and nor should they really know um, that you, you're kind of like you know moving where that identity um, happens to be stored. So that's sure. kind of like a seamless migration kind of approach. So that's one of the <clears throat> types of um, engagements we've had with customers over you know over the last year or two. The other one that's really interesting is where you have um, a customer that might have affiliates um, as their customers, and then those affiliates then need to manage um, their own sets of users. But you don't want those other users to be able to see maybe you know some other affiliates' users. So you almost right. have to do like delegated user management. Mm. Um, and so there's a couple of different approaches that you can take with that. Um, there's actually um, a newer feature with B2C that just released, I think, in October. Um, it's still in public preview, but it's called API Connectors. Um, and that allows you to call out to RESTful APIs through things called user flows, which are very easy to configure, very easy to uh, get up and, and, and run with. Um, but you can actually use you know, an API connector to call out to maybe some um, delegation service to figure out, you know, hey, David Herster is coming to the site. What's his role? Um, what affiliate might he be associated with? And essentially set um, attributes or claims about um, David Herster and the B2C tenant, so that he can only, you know, he's only associated with like certain other affiliate users. So that's an interesting problem to solve um, with B2C, and it's it's pretty. There's a number of different ways we've you can tackle it, um, and uh, it's it's just a, it's it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. type of problem solved. So the, I think that's one of the reasons I'm, I'm drawn to identity and, and B2C is that it's pretty much a problem everybody has to solve. There's so many different ways you can solve it. <laughs> and um, I just think that the technology to, to deal with that is is really interesting. And it's constantly evolving. Which uh, Yeah, I like the problems that are, uh, they exercise both parts of your brain. There's, there's the, the yeah. kind of analytical side and understanding the, the problem space and the tools yep. to use it. And then there's a the creative side of you've yep. got this uh, edge case that uh, people are doing something a little bit different. How do we how do we make the tools work within that space? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, the one, the one customer that I, I had, did work with, and this was maybe like a year or so ago, um, and the person I was working with there, I mean, that, that guy was was awesome. So like we had this great relationship, um, like just bouncing ideas off of each other. And yeah, I, I felt like we were pushing the edge, like in terms of, I mean, I was still getting up to speed also on, on B2C. So I mean, I was still kind of learning a little bit. Um, but yeah, I felt like everything we did um, was just, was really, really um, interesting. And it was always like, there was always some new requirement that came up and we we're like, okay, Okay, we have this solution in place. How do we now take it like one more step to you know integrate to some other API, uh, or we're going to handle um, like some you know interesting way to handle terms of service? Like really, really neat little um, requirements that kept kind of getting thrown into the mix, and it was just fun, and nice. it was a successful engagement, and um, it was awesome. Like it was just it was like one of those projects that lasted, um, you know, three, four, five months, something like that. But it was awesome. Like anytime. Uh, you know, I got to work on that engagement. 
I was just like stoked. It was great. Awesome. So, yeah. Um, people that are just starting out, where's a good place to start? Um, I think if you start out with B2C, I think obviously going to um, the MSDN docs for Azure AD B2C is a great place to start. There's a um, nice little tutorial section in the document uh, documentation to help you, you know, spin up a B2C tenant, um, maybe create your first uh, user flow, like a sign up, sign in kind of um, experience. And it just kind of walks you through just the basics of um, working with user flows in B2C. And, and then even like integrating in um, maybe like a third party uh, social IDP um, into your into your user flow. So allowing a user to sign up not only with like a local account, like Dave at AcmeSportingGoods.com, but also being able to bring in my GitHub account so I can log into your website. And um, th that's, a, that's a pretty good tutorial um, on, on the B2C docs side. And um, I think it exposes you to a, a good number of things that uh, B2C has to offer right out of the box. I right. think I'm looking at that page right now. Azure Active Directory B2C documentation, and there's sections on uh, AD B2C basics, use cases, uh, added sign in, authorization, security. There's all, uh, all sorts of resources here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a ton. It's, the, oh, it's the a docs quick starts. Are, uh, I, like, I like the quick starts. Yeah, I think it's probably the quick start, is what I'm thinking of. So I don't have the docs in front of me, but. Um, I'll put a yeah, I would, I would definitely start there. If you're, if you're new to B2C, if, you're com you know, if your company is looking to. Um, you know, bring identity like a you know a, a good uh, you know customer identity and access management solution to your website. Um, you know, you're looking to migrate off of a legacy system. Uh, B2C is a great solution for that, and the B2C docs um, on the MSDN side is is pretty fantastic. So I can't I can't give it enough. Uh, I, I go there all the time. There's always something Excellent. new I'm learning there. <laughs> um, Dave, thank you so much for your time. It's great talking to you. Oh, it's great talking to you, David. Great Stay catching safe. up. You too. See ya. You know, David, all my friends tell me that my kids know technology a whole lot better than me. <laughs>